An unexpected global pandemic has changed the way that we as a society operate, increasing demand for new remote ways of working and video calling services. Zoom has used this as an opportunity to become a household name. It's used by businesses, teachers, YouTubers, and even PE classes. Investing in Zoom stock would have been a very good idea, as it rose by 268% in the first half of 2020, compared to just 14% for the Nasdaq. But how did Zoom beat the video calling giants, such as Skype, Hangouts, and Webex? How did Zoom overcome the strong position these services had and the huge companies that backed them. I'm Chris, and this is Simple Strategy, the channel that explains the reason behind business decisions. To understand Zoom, we first need to look at its founder, Eric Yuan. Eric was originally from Shandong in China. He studied applied mathematics and computer application at Shandong University of Science and Technology. It was here in his first year of university in 1987 when he originally got the idea for Zoom. Eric and his girlfriend, who is now his wife, lived in different cities separated by a 10-hour train journey. It was on these long journeys that Eric sat daydreaming of ways in which he could see his girlfriend without the inconvenience of the difficult journey. This is when he realised the potential of video calling as a way to connect people who are physically apart. In 1994, Eric had graduated from university and attended a speech given by Bill Gates then CEO of Microsoft, about the promise of the internet. Eric was so inspired by this talk that he made the decision to move to the US to take part in the Silicon Valley tech boom. However, this wouldn't be an easy transition and it shows the determination of Eric and his willpower to succeed. It took three years and eight rejected visa applications before he was finally accepted on his ninth application. Then, when he arrived in the US, Eric set about looking for a job. He could barely speak English. However, he did know how to code, and this landed him a job at Webex, the video conferencing company, where he was one of the first dozen software engineers. Eric climbed the corporate ladder and was promoted to vice president of engineering in 2007, when Cisco saw the potential in Webex and acquired it for 3.2 billion US dollars. However, when Eric spoke to Cisco Webex customers, he did not see a single happy customer. He claimed Cisco was not evolving the product fast enough and was still using the same buggy code that he himself had written for Webex roughly two decades ago. It was in 2011 when Eric realised that he could do better and left Cisco to start Zoom. This brings us to the first reason why Zoom has beaten the competition. Zoom was designed with mobile video conferencing specifically in mind. Other services such as Microsoft Teams and Skype are built on code that has been adapted to cope with video. And Webex was designed with conference rooms in mind rather than mobile devices. Zoom made sure that their code was highly optimised for video calling, ensuring that calls could still run even on poor connections. In the early days, Eric would personally email every customer that cancelled to find out how he could make the product better. These conversations led to developing an incredibly easy to use interface and improving the video calls so that they could feel as natural as possible. For example, the maximum acceptable delay would have to be 150 milliseconds. Delay is the difference in time between the caller saying something and the person on the other side of the call hearing that. A long delay can make conversations awkward and frustrating. Tonight at 10, a jobs and prospects. This is the benefit of building the code to work in the cloud from scratch in 2011 when mobile devices were already mature. Capacity was planned so that no more than 50% was ever utilised, and it was also built in the cloud so that extra capacity could be quickly added. This has proven to be a very good idea with the unexpected growth in the number of video calls caused by the pandemic. The second reason why Zoom has been so successful has been due to the network effect. Typically, the network effect is a disadvantage to new startups. Think about Facebook. Despite its criticisms, Facebook still has 2.6 billion monthly active users. And the reason why many people are likely still using Facebook is because all of your friends are on Facebook. The value from the platform 
is in the users that make up the platform. If a new social media platform comes along, it is very hard to convince people to join a social network if there is no one to socialize with. Likewise, the value in video calling is only as valuable as the people you are able to communicate with. Zoom has avoided the negative network effect that harms new entrants by not requiring users to have an account to join a meeting. This means that despite not being particularly well known, people could organize Zoom meetings using Zoom without worrying whether the people they wanted to call had an account. This is a problem that affected Google Hangouts until 2015 and Skype until 2016, when they finally dropped the requirement to have an account. This allowed Zoom to grow, despite not originally having many users. It also introduces a lot of new people to Zoom. Every business meeting, yoga class, or online DJ set introduces new people to become familiar with the platform. Suppose that each member introduces five new users to the platform, and then each of those users introduces a further five new members. The number of users grows incredibly quickly. In fact, it would only take 14 rounds of introductions before the entire world has used the platform. Of course, this is an extreme example, but it goes to show just how quickly these networks can grow. The third reason for Zoom's growth is due to its generous free offerings. Zoom allows up to 100 participants to meet for free for up to 40 minutes. Zoom has also responded to the pandemic by offering its product free for schools. I told our team to my myself every morning, in 20 or 30 years, when we look back, I want everybody to remember this. Zoom is doing the right thing to help Americans, to help the rest of the world, to keep the economy ongoing. This may well be true, but it also has a huge benefit to Zoom in getting its product into the hands of as many users as possible. As we spoke about previously, the growth of these platforms can be exponential, and the use of Zoom jumped 30-fold in April, as more people were working, learning, and socialising from home. Thank you very much for watching till the end of my very first YouTube video. I'd be really keen to hear what you have to think about uh, the video itself in the comments, and also, why do you think Zoom has grown so quickly? Do you agree with the points that I've made in this video? I'd be really interested to hear uh, what you all think. And please do consider subscribing. It's really going to help out a new channel like mine. I'm planning on doing a lot more videos like this, looking at the strategies of businesses in the future. If there's anything else that you think might be interesting for me to cover in the future, then please leave it in the comments down below. Thank you.